Girls. And we have such, I, I don't even know, I have all the words in my head I want to be able to say, to describe this phenomenal artists Ooh. that we have on our platform today i mean just i mean the soul the the eloquence of your voice and just you. so phenomenal oh. just amazing oh, nice. so i want everybody to please just please just put it all together give it up for sophia gale <laughs> Hey girls, hey. just correct you. My last name is pronounced Galate. 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 Oh, no one ever knows. correct me. Yes, I love it. Okay. Um, well, beautiful. Yeah. Wait. Should we wait a second so that my peoples can join? Oh yes. 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 That's fine. We um, won't get the party started. <laughs> where Where are you guys based? New York. We're based in New York. Yes. Uh, Queens. Yes. Love. Of New York. Yes. Yeah, so I'm been, New York, LA or I live in LA. Um but I like I'm also Chicago's my second home, so I feel like I kind of represent both cities. Okay. I'm okay. from here though. I'm from LA though. Okay. But um I'm I work a lot with musicians in Chicago. It's kind of like my second hometown. So I'm also kind of a Chicago artist, which okay. is really cool because it's kind of I get like two hometowns. Mm -hmm. music, so. I've never been to Chicago. I was here so nice. Oh my god, it's the, like in the best. But yes. the thing is, like, different than New York. Like, New York gives me something that Chicago is like super deep rooted for me. But New York mm -hmm. definitely gives me something different than, like, as a city as a whole. Like, mm -hmm. New York is pretty unmatched. Yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> she light. was like, she had a. But I'm all I literally was just having a conversation with like probably like a few people. I was just like, I have to get to Chicago. Um, I'm originally from upstate Rochester, and I was okay. always talking about the winters. And I was just like, Chicago, I hear the winters oh, are so very brutal. different. Like they're, they're brutal. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely colder than New York, but um I don't know, I love Chicago all season so i'm not really the best listen person. that's our you, you got it girl i'm gonna definitely yeah. make sure i visit in the springtime um and then may i ask i mean i guess we can answer it how did you guys find my music so i came across your music via instagram and so i'm always danielle knows like i'm always searching for just to hear a new sound or a different vibe and for instance, like for our platform, we always want to bring in, I mean, just amazing talent um, that is, you know, that definitely music that goes up against the test of time and far as voices. And so when I came across, I was just been listening to um, both the albums that you have put out. And it was just something that gives me like, just, you know, so, so just, I mean, really good, chill vibes just to be able to relax and just something about your voice it's just yeah, it drew me I thoroughly and I fell in love music, fell yeah. in love oh, fell in love yes. and I've been a fan ever since so I, I um I just well first of all thank you so much yeah that's amazing um I really appreciate you know I have like a different like nostalgic tone mm -hmm. it's like you know right. different than what's kind of current so i appreciate you right. that you really get it um i wish i knew known because i had a show in new york in may oh my gosh but now i know so that i can yes definitely you know, keep, just keep us there. noted yeah. i mean we just and we always get um and i know we're gonna jump into this so thank you guys for tuning in we're gonna get into i know we just having a little side little dish or whatever <laughs> but um i'm very yeah. um i just listen to everything from not only just from the vocal wise but lyrically mm -hmm. i literally will go through and go through and read through the lyrics You're it's something cool. about for me about the songwriting that with artists and it's just something that i can just touch on the emotions from you creativity from your you creatively in regards to the writing so you know danielle no i will my process where it's just like i'm listening yeah, she's to very, the very same very project cool. over and over over and over just listening that at four different tones i'm listening for the production i'm listening and i'm looking at the songwriting i'm paying attention to all the levels of the the, the, the track the album whatever it is mm -hmm. they put out i'm listening at at levels so when i came across you it was just like Hold on, she captured me literally within like 20 seconds. You captured me. 
And you I was know like, what I song listen. you heard first? Or maybe I was just singing. Like, Actually, it was what the, you were promoting. It was the Don't Want to Let You Down. Okay, so was that one was the recent. That was that was that one of what that caption from that one's for. And then what I did was I went back to a lot God. of your older projects. Okay, so it was recent. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, so maybe you didn't, you didn't know we want to have the show in New York. No, 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 no. no. Oh. Okay, well, now you know. Moving forward. So yes. I'll, yeah. I'll pick you guys up when I'm there. Okay, awesome. <laughs> Well, that's interesting because Don't Want to Let You Down is, like, definitely the most, like, newer, different sound than my previous mm-hmm. stuff. Oh, yeah, that's most fun. definitely. I went, I only went back to your earlier, and we're going to talk about that, actually. Um, so when we get into this, um, actually, let's start. Kind of talk about more of your 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 start in regards to music and just, you know, discovering your passion and yeah for it and taking that journey in songwriting? Well, I have a super unique story about how I became an artist. Um, I've, I've always been singing since I was like five. I did musical theater, like in elementary, middle school. And then um, I, but I always like gravitated more towards just singing rather than acting. And I like won this local contest in my hometown, which beca- the local contest was like smaller mm-hmm. audience wise mm-hmm. than like actually at my school. And because I won that, I was able to sing like my solo, the solo song at um, the school concert, which was like, I was in eighth grade. And it's so funny, like I sang this like ballad by Pink, like it's called Nobody Knows. It's like a piano ballad that like no one knows when you think of Pink, you don't really like think, think of yeah. that. Mm-hmm. But like, that's my, that's my, that's my debut song. Um, and so basically when I was in high school, I was just like one of the main singers at my high school. Um, so like every school concert, choir concert, you know, select people would get chosen to do their own song Mm -hmm. in addition to the choir (laughs) song. So I always had solo songs, always wanted to be an artist. Like I had a lot of confidence growing up as a singer because I performed all the time. So I got always Mm -hmm. had confidence on stage and everyone who knew me growing up, like knew that I was going to be a singer, went to college in Chicago. Um, and it was like, once I moved to a big city, just like all the fears of like telling people that I wanted to be an artist like came over me. And it's just like, there's a lot of judgment that comes with that. Like, oh, good luck, I'm gonna be a singer, you know? Mm-hmm. Which I feel like I kind of more like brought upon myself. It wasn't really ever like that many people said that to me. It was just like, I felt that it seemed really daunting to me. So it was, it was interesting because I still studied music in, in college and I would like, play whenever I was at someone's house I would always like play the piano and sing and everyone thought that I was good but I was always like oh I just want to do it as a yeah. hobby yeah. it was kind of like a way for me to like not hold myself accountable or protect me from it so it's like if I sang for someone and they thought I wasn't good well it doesn't matter anyway because I'm not going to do it for real so it's kind of like a defense mechanism mm-hmm. in a way and um I grew up listening to you know my dad played a lot of like Motown and oldies like all the time my mom played a lot of Carol King and James Taylor and stuff like mm-hmm. that. And uh, Chicago, I really fell in love with jazz because I studied jazz history and stuff like that. So that's kind of mm-hmm. like one of my influences. And I feel like I learned more about like the neo soul era when I was in college. And um, so anyways, when I graduated, I was like, I'm just going to work in the music industry mm-hmm. because I'm too scared to be an artist. So um, I quit singing and I moved back to LA and I worked in the music industry so my first job out of college was i worked at a touring agency i like worked for an agent booking tours and no one none of my colleagues knew that my background was in singing and um basically i worked in the industry for like a few years before i switched over to the artist side and i worked in touring i worked in management like i was managing other artists my kind of my story is kind of like that i was like a closeted singer but i was like a manager like turned artist so I thought that working for artists would be just easier and just as fulfilling because I wouldn't have to try as hard to be an artist, but I would still be around it. And it turns out it was actually way more difficult because I was so close to it Mm -hmm. and just not pursuing what I wanted to do. So, um, it was, it was crazy. It's like, I, I had two voices in my head. One was like my artist voice that was super suppressed by my like negative self that was like, no, you can't Mm -hmm. do it. It's going to be too hard. Like your clients are going to judge you. Everyone who works with you on the industry side is going to be like, what the hell are you doing? Mm -hmm. But like the artist voice in me, like 
always visualized myself doing it. I didn't know when it would happen, but I just felt it. And everyone that I grew up with that knew me my whole life would always ask me, oh, are you still singing? Because that was my identity growing up. So like, they, there was a few things that knew. kind of like, yeah, and they knew. It's kind of, yeah, like people just like, even when I was in high school, like people were just like, oh, like she's got it. And even I look at, back at videos of me singing in high school, I'm like, I wasn't even good then. But at the time it was good. And so um, when I was a manager, um, I really was at a point where I just, I needed to sing for myself. And I feel like that's something that like really, when I get super frustrated about the industry or when I get in times where I'm like, I feel super helpless, mm -hmm. I just remind myself why I do it. And the reason is like, I just love singing, like the feeling of singing, even when I'm like truly alone. So when I was a manager, I was like, I just want to start writing songs for myself. I know that I'm never going to release them because I'm a manager and I can't tell anyone that I'm writing songs because I'm a manager and I don't want it to seem yeah. unprofessional. And yeah. Weird, blurred Like, lines. oh, she's so, just trying to get a come up or something. Yeah. yeah. So I just, um, like, started writing songs alone in my bedroom. This was in, like, 2018. And mm -hmm. what's interesting is that, yeah, I know you asked about my songwriting. I really never wrote songs until the Sophia EP. Really? Yeah, I wrote one song in high school so i guess i know you probably have a question that's like what's the first song i ever wrote <laughs> i wrote this song in high school called nothing i was like it's not nothing even matters or, or like nothing really matters it's not and it it's like a super basic song i could probably remember it it's just like it's not a great song it was it was just about how like nothing matters in life i don't i don't really know i have to revisit it <laughs> And then all throughout college, I feel like I maybe wrote like, like one song idea on the piano. Like truly, I didn't write music. And and then when I was a manager, I like downloaded like the music <laughs> recording software. And mm -hmm. I wrote one song that wasn't really fully done. It was like a super depressing song. But I would say that the first complete song that I wrote that I felt was great is my song, Hey Baby. That's the last song on the Sophia Project. Mm -hmm. Um, I can stop there if you have any questions to how I like, no. it, but, um, <laughs> yeah, it's like a backwards story. It's like most people, like they were artists mm -hmm. and they tried it and then they became yeah. executives or something. What was so. like the exact, like pinpoint moment that you were just like, okay, I'm not doing this anymore. I'm not being a manager. Like I'm, I'm there was a few, there was a few catalyst moments mm -hmm. that happened for me and it took me some time, like from when I first wrote my song. So I founded this like management company with three other girls that I worked at my agency with. It still exists. It's called The Nucleus. And um, when I left my agency job, I started managing Andre Power, who's the co-founder of Selection, mm -hmm. familiar with the collective. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I remember like, I kind of like accidentally became his manager because I thought I was being hired to like do some other different types of creative stuff via his old manager and it ended up, not working out with that guy so i just kind of took over everything mm -hmm. and i was super young at the time and andre is 10 years older than me so i felt like i always knew that i wanted to be closer to music but i was just like you know what this might be a really great opportunity for me so yeah I'm gonna, yeah i'm just gonna lean in and like i loved selection and i just knew and it's so interesting i was just having this conversation with some the other day i was i i had asked myself recently what the most important decision in my life has been mm. i have two answers one of them is so the reason why i love chicago is because my best friend from la moved to chicago when i was 10 and i flew there by myself when i was 10 years old to visit her mm -hmm. and that trip changed my whole life because then chicago became my city so i would say that decision but i also think that my other most important decision was to become andre's manager because being and it's so funny, someone, when I told that to someone, they were like, oh, I thought you were going to say the most important decision was to stop being Andre's manager. And I was like, no, because me being a manager and doing it for someone else, like made, me taking even more time away from what I wanted to do made me fully realize that I had to do what I needed to do. Yeah. You know, it was like I was Understood. investing everything into someone else. And it was great. Like I had met such beautiful people through him and it made me really like realize what I was meant to do by doing it for someone else. Mm -hmm. So, um, so anyways, I, I wrote a couple songs 
when I first started being a manager and I remember when I moved in to, uh, I moved in with like one of my best friends, basically like a few months after I wrote the song and she kind of, she was like a newer friend from, you know, my post college. So she didn't really know about my like singing background. And I remember within the first two weeks of us living together, I played her my song, Hey Baby. And she sat on my bed and cried. And so I was like, okay, this is effective. Like this, mm -hmm. and it's so funny. It's like, I told myself not to be an artist for so long before I even tried to do anything. It's like, I, I told myself not to do it. And I, I didn't even, I hadn't even started like, and then it was like, once I started doing things, it worked. So it's like, okay, I made songs that were great. And then I had to put together a really small show in like this May of 2019. And, um, I didn't have a show because I wanted to be an artist. Like mm -hmm. I was also like prior to me, Sophia is my government name, but like my whole life, everyone just called me Sophie G. I never used Sophia. So, um, I was like, like I was like, I'm just Sophie G like having a show because I miss singing. It was purely mm -hmm. like, just because of it. I wanted to sing. I, at the time I was like, I'm not gonna be an artist. I just want to sing. So I had a show and the show went so well that I was like, wow, I should record one of these songs. So it was like, once I just started doing the things, but even when I like had that show, I didn't release my first song until like a year and a half later. Um, and I was still managing at the time. And then I remember in addition to Andre, I started working with this band called Catalyst. They're like this eight piece jazz ish band in LA. And when we started working with them, I was like, wow they are so good i literally said to myself i was like if i ever decide to sing again i would love to play with them and now like all of them like play with me so there's all the <laughs> so like that happened and then i think it took me a really long time to record my first song mm -hmm. and like i shot a video for it and everything it came out like in the pandemic and it was just like when i started doing those things it made me feel like who i really was supposed to be because when I was a manager, even though I did a great job, I I didn't feel like myself. Like, people now, not anymore, but when I first became an artist, you know, my brand is super, like, sensual and, like, sultry, mm -hmm. like, like, sexy. And, like, people who knew me as a manager were, like, what the heck? Because when I was a manager, like, I was a, a young... I was a young woman and I wanted to be taken seriously. So it's like, I would go to selection shows and like not dress cute, mm -hmm. like not wear makeup. I, I want to be taken seriously. So for, whereas like my friends who've known me my whole life, they're like, no, you've always been this like sensual woman. But like as a manager, I had to be like super, I felt like I had to be super straight and narrow. So I feel like once I just started doing the things, it was received really well. And I felt like it was what I was supposed to be doing. Okay. And I do want to piggyback a little bit um, because I want to talk, just kind of figure out like how did you were able to get, even though you was doing little bit by little bit, but still working as a manager, how did you personally just get over that imposter syndrome that you, oh my God. you had kind, yeah. Of, yeah. kind of more uh, of just trying to talk yourself into? It was painful. Like, because somebody asked me, like, how did you, and I'm like, honestly, it was literally just like took years of like, mm -hmm back and forth in my mind about it. And it was almost like the stress, it was like super, I remember specifically on one of my birthdays, like when I turned 25, I was like so depressed because I wasn't pursuing me. I was just like trying to pursue it. And I was like, I don't really know. I just feel like what I, I feared a lot of people's judgment of me transitioning from mm -hmm. the business it was like i knew that once people heard me sing it would make sense to them but it's just the breaking of the ice mm -hmm. was seemed so like when i when i invited my colleagues to my first like fake show they were like like we'll come because we'll, we're your friend but like we don't know what you're doing like that was the response and i was like oh so it wasn't like a genuine like oh my gosh i'm super excited we're gonna come and support no no you. they were like we oh. want to support you because we're oh. your friend but we don't know what this is yeah, yeah, and no, I was okay. like, once they heard me sing they're like oh okay so it was kind of like it's so funny because now it's like I, but think about like i had never even posted just let's say that you guys were like a closeted pole dancer or something and you've been doing it your whole life <laughs> but nice. no one knew 
but no one knew it. And then you just right. really wanted to post a video yeah. of you like pole uh, dancing on your Instagram. People would be like, where's the time? Yeah, right. So it was right. kind of like right. that. <laughs> okay. Gotcha, so gotcha. It was like, I knew that once I got over the hump of like, but the thing is that that also kind of worked in my favor because yeah. it created this shock value to people that they were like, mm. whoa, we had no idea. Like you're living two different lives yeah. in the same, yeah. like, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. It was like weird. It was just like my perceived judgment of other people, even though like people were super supportive once I did it. And then those supports turned into like just true loyal fans. Yeah. That was just like so admiring like were, the like, work and the people the, that I worked with it. that now help me on the more creative side of things or something like that. So, and I think it's really clear that, you know, it's super like authentic, you know. Yeah, art and yeah. Now, being that you were a manager prior and you switched over to being an artist, um, currently, do you have a manager right now? Or are you I, so the girls part? that I um, have my management company with? They are part of my team. I would say like I still like manage everything myself okay. though. Um, so that's something that I'm, you know, How is that? been trying to like put out into the. It's. I feel like now I'm at a different level where it's super overwhelming. Whereas like before, like the first few years, like I'm super smart about the industry. So it's also like, I'm not just going to have like anyone be my manager. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I feel yeah, like yeah. now that I'm leveling up, I'm really just manifesting someone who's going to be my manager for yeah, real, right. because I want to be signed eventually. And, you know, a manager, somebody who seeks, seeks out things like that. Right. Um, and you know like being a manager is is hard you have to like mm -hmm. dedicate like when i was a manager for andre like i was like he was my life so you know i want and i think is i really feel like i'm an easy client though because i'm i handle everything myself so it's really just like take what i have and put it bring it to some executive level that i'm maybe not able to access mm -hmm. myself currently. So. now are you going to be able to release yeah, that was my next question. <laughs> like, 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 are you going to be able to relinquish that, you know, that, that, that responsibility guess, of you responsibility doing everything? That aspect yeah. when you do be able to pick up that manager? Because sometimes that can be difficult. Yeah, because I'm so, like, on it and thinking yeah. of things all the time. It's more mm -hmm. like what I always say, like, my main, like, I'm fine doing a lot of the admin and, like, day-to-day -day stuff. It's really, like, helping me expand visibility it's like i don't want a manager to like do do the day-to-day -day stuff right now it's like i want somebody to because you know like everything that i do is really off the strength of my own network mm -hmm. so it's like right now i've been like shopping around you know where i want to really who i want to release my album through and like everyone like yeah the music's amazing and everything's well put together and mm -hmm. so thorough but i don't have the numbers that they're looking for so it's like with a manager who's more strategic and more like executive mm -hmm. maybe they have that's kind of the first initial thing i'm looking for is like bigger opportunities for me to be in spaces that i don't have access to so but yes i i do feel like a part of me um hasn't really been able to bring a manager into my life because i'm so like well i'll shit myself <laughs> Cause so you, let me, let me, like, let me you know, it. but you have your best interest in you. So you have to like having somebody have control of that. It's like, are you going to have my best interests? Like, for sure. Are you going to, sure. are you going to be as honest I mean? as I am? Like, yeah. Um, so, um, yeah. So I was going to say, let's tap into the, the artistry side, because clearly with the music, you know, at this point you have been releasing music, you are traveling, um, where you're going different places. And of course, um, you're setting that tone for your artistry at this point. You know, you have definitely shared stages with some of my favorites. <laughs> JoJo, Kenyon Dixon, of course. Can't wait. Kenyon, if you're listening, we need you next, homie. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, I want to talk about Gene Noble as well, because that Her voice. Best singer on earth. That voice, honey. No. Well, the question like, is, talk about, you know, some of the, with I all of the artists that you have worked with and you traveled with and, you know, opened and been on stage with. 
kind of talk about some of the influences that they have on you as an artist, artist and you know and especially with touring because yeah. touring is a lot mm -hmm. um well it's funny because opening for jojo was like I, I just did her la show was like literally the first first like actual show that i did as an artist like the first thing i did wow. um because i feel like my like sh fake show it wasn't a fake show but <laughs> the show i mentioned wasn't really like me as an artist yet um like i released my ep and then i like opened for jojo um i mean i didn't how many people can say that like, yeah not a lot um i it's so funny because i look back at those videos too and i'm like wow like just like the arrangements of the songs were just like so like i wouldn't even do it like that anymore but um <laughs> i don't really get to spend much time with jojo but she is was super kind and super nice and she asked me like how i felt about the show and I just love her in general because she has like a really complicated, like difficult artist story. And I loved the resurgence of her through mm -hmm. PJ Morton, who is like, oh, yeah. my PJ oh, yeah. Yeah. Artist. Okay. Uh, love. Um, so, but she's just like super pure and authentic as well. And she, yeah. you know, she does a lot of different things outside of just performing. And I, I kind of relate to her a lot in that sense. Um, Jean, no, did you know about Jean Pryor? I don't know of her. That voice is, and then yeah. when I listened to your project, and I was like, "Wait, he's over here!" So I just like need to tell the story about Jean since you're a fan because it's so <laughs> funny. So me and Jean like share a co-manager, and I had heard, before I was an artist, or like she, he had a show that was like a jazz show that he did in LA, super intimate. And when I was like trying to transition into an artist, she, our like co-manager Ileana basically got me to like be able to sing one song to like open his show mm -hmm. i had never heard gene sing before and i'm telling you i still say to this day that that was the best show that I ever i've ever been to because i had i didn't I had no, no expectations and so basically after that show i was like literally floored like i'm like crying thinking about it um so i was became obsessed with him like at the time i i feel like I was acting like he was like Chris, like D'Angelo or something. Like, not because he's not famous like that, but I was obsessed with him. And Ileana, like, I would listen to his, un I had access to his unreleased music for like years. And I would, mm -hmm. I really feel like the reason I can do runs the way I do is be from mm. memorizing his unreleased music. Mm. And I always like really just credit him to helping me, like, just a lot of my techn technicalities that I can do. And so I don't know if you know or have seen on YouTube, but there's a video of me and Jean singing Send It On by D'Angelo. And I'll send it to you after if you haven't seen I it. I love that song. And so after my first song came out, Body, I um, performed it on Selection's live stream. This was during the pandemic. And mm -hmm. basically my friend who was a selection DJ, she had this live stream and she got four different artists to perform in her live stream. One was me one, and one was Jean and then a couple others. And um, I was going to sing my song Body and D I was going to sing Send It On solo. Like it was going to be my own song. But because Jean was coming in to rehearse with the band after me, Jean and also like me, like I'm a, I think as, like Gene, I would act, I would be so nervous around him, like he was a celebrity because I just loved his voice. He literally walks into rehearsal as I'm singing Send It On and he just starts singing with me. And I'm like, what? So, like, basically, I asked him to sing the song with me. So, he, him and I made it a duet. Mm. There's this video of it on YouTube. And I still say to this day, I'm like, until I sing with PJ Morton, that is the best. Me singing with Gene was the best day of my life because, in context, at the time, Gene was my idol. I don't, yes, I would love to sing with him still. I dream about it every day, but I'm like, I think at, at, it wouldn't be as like effective because I know him now, but at the time. <laughs> and then, you know, when I was writing my song, I was like, there's no other voice that I want. So mm -hmm. that's cool. And I really just like, if anyone asks you who my favorite vocalist is, like I will always say him. Like I hear the, the chemistry just over the track like it's, how it just syncs so well together I like it's amazing but i digress yeah. <laughs> how, was, how, was, like, how was that energy with you guys come back like coming together for chicago so, like what so i mean we weren't together mm -hmm. like basically i wrote 
my love song to the city because I <laughs> really feel like I'm in a long term, long distance relationship with the city of Chicago. And I, I like end up writing the verse that he sang because it was kind of like Chicago singing back to me. And it's like a personal thing. I mean, it was, mm. it was super easy. It was just like, will you sing this? And like, he even added a lot of like extra like runs and all these things. And I, I still have a video. I have a video of myself, like selfie video of me, like listening to it when I first got it. It's so funny. Cause I'm like freaking out. <laughs> But that's like my favorite song because it's super yeah. special, um, or one of them. But so clearly, we know you. We 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 already know who you want your your collaboration to be with PJ Morgan. Mm -hmm. You're you're definitely holding. It'll up happen. PJ. Like we're like acquainted. So. Yeah, yeah it's, like, it's we're definitely gonna um, happen. I love yeah. that. Is there any other artist you're looking to say like you know what that you want to be able to have that good collaboration with to be able to do a good song with? Yeah. The there's a lot. I mean, I would love to work with Anderson Pack. I would love oh, I to just like that. sing with Maxwell. Or oh, cool. um, there's certain artists that I don't like that I like, like. I would love to open for Ari Lennox because I just mm. love. I don't know. I just there's certain people like that. It's, it's hard for me. To think, it's hard for me to think of. Um, um, it's funny. It's like all the people I want to work with are like old. <laughs> um current people um i don't know i feel like pj warren's like the most within reach as of now um yeah there's a lot. it's hard for me to think of like women that i want to work with but yeah a lot of like in the pj martin realm bj the chicago kid mm -hmm. um, Ander anderson obviously just like is so versatile and i really love his collaborations with women because like for example like his song with jasmine sullivan like she kind of like mm -hmm. rap she like rap sings before she sings and it's just really cool and i want to explore that realm of me so okay um now if you could perform any one of your songs and we're gonna we're going to see your new music that you do have released mm -hmm. if you could perform any one one for the rest of your life which one would that be I would probably say, should I tell you? Um, Speaking of. I, I was going to say, <laughs> should I tell you or love me? But should I tell you, like, is my favorite song to sing? Because in general, I like, if nothing mattered in the world, I would just do all my songs with just my voice and a piano. Um, I feel like a lot of my favorite singers that I discovered myself growing up, growing up were because of their ballad. Like I love, like I loved Adele in high school, and I would cover all her songs. Mm -hmm. So I feel like I loved, <clears throat> and like John Legend is like, like the early John Legend is like yes. the reason why I'm a singer. So it's like when I think of just a piano and a voice, the, a lot of that early stuff is what I love. So I feel like my voice really shines when it's just piano. So, but should I tell you is like the most vulnerable, like saddest, like emotional song to me. And when I sing it live, it just feels so good. Like, and there's something about sad songs that I really, really love, but I, you know, I really just feel the emotion when I sing that. So I perform it really well. Um, so I would say that. And it's super, like when I was on Jets on tour, like everyone was like shook after that song because they just weren't expecting it. Cause it was just like so dialed in. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to transition into don't let you down. Yeah, don't let you die. Um, how? Because that like it's so different from like what you've been releasing before. So like, where did that come from? So, so this was like a joint collaboration with this producer in Chicago. His name is Amoy Day, mm -hmm. um, who is kind of like known of me just like through the Chicago scene and stuff like that over the years. Um, so technically, this song was for his EP that he just released, mm. and um, I'm so like honored that he thought of me for this record so he kind of worked with um i mean he has a lot of obviously international influence and a lot of like right. brazilian yeah. influence yeah, yeah, yeah his wife is from brazil and he's filipino <laughs> but his wife is from brazil so um he basically made this record with a couple other musicians in chicago and you know he has five songs on his project and like three of them he wanted singers on and when he sent it to me, he sent it to me last September. And I remember when I heard the instrumental, I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. 
but I was like, how do I write something to this? Because I just had never done anything like it. Mm-hmm. And he was pretty, um, um, he had some guidelines. So he was just <laughs> like, I don't want there to be a, t- I don't want it to be a typical structured song. Like I don't want verse, chorus, verse, chorus, whatever. I want there to be space. I want there to be some chanting. I want like, mm. so I, initially I was kind of overwhelmed. It's so funny because the song is super simple mm-hmm. when you listen to it. It's just like, the music is so amazing. Yes. And like my part is it's like the whole pretty bizarre. simple. Yeah. It's, it's just like, like it's there's a verse and then it kind of just like repeats and the song's not really about anything deep. It's just a vibe. So it's funny when I say, but it was so difficult for me to write and it was super overwhelming because when you listen to the song, it's like, okay. <laughs> um, so I, I remember when he first sent it to me, like it, I didn't even like try any ideas on it until like three months later. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I'd had the like the don't want to let you down idea like by the end of last, last year and um, maybe some like melody ideas for the verse um, that I did like, you know, remotely and then um we had i was in chicago in february and him and all the people that were part of his album got together for a session and it was almost like i have no no time like i need to get the song done so we just had a session and i went into one of the rooms by myself and i just wrote wrote the verses and added stuff so um yeah but i i always like i always was like why did you give me the hardest song Mm -hmm. And then I was like, wait, I got the best song. <laughs> so I feel like it's like, it's a really, like, a feel-good song. Yeah, like, yeah and what was um, awesome about it is dancing. that, <laughs> yeah, and, and most of my music, you know, it, prior was very, like, fall, winter time, you know. So I loved that I was able to drop this during the summer and mm-hmm. introduce people to more of, like, a fun but, side yeah, of me. Cause yeah, I feel yeah, like, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, because I'm moving into it with my new music, I mean, my new unreleased music is still super sultry, but I think like aesthetically, yes. I don't want it to be as like dark and moody. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, there's obviously some like m- super moody songs on my upcoming project, but <laughs> which we some... I love I love moody music. I love good. Yes. Yes. I'm telling you, I would do a, I would do a whole album of sad ballads that I could. <laughs> I love. Um, it. So it was just a nice space for people to see me mm-hmm. in, and like you know, like. Uh, you probably saw the visuals where I was just like on the beach, like yes. hair natural. Love it, love it, love it. Yeah. Now, now every. Go ahead. I'm so sorry, because um, <laughs> I think there's a little bit of delay. That's why. Um, now this now is this setting the tone in regards to upcoming projects that you do have, like far as album wise. Because I know, like you said, you kind of want to go into that direction. People see that different perspective of you and persona of you. Well, um, yes, I'm working on an album. Um, I mean, actually, all the songs are written already for the album. And um, I'm in the process of just repolishing them, you know, like re-recording mm-hmm. vocals, adding different production. Mm-hmm. So I would say that Don't Let You Down is like the only one of its kind on the album. But um there's just like different groove patterns i feel like so mm-hmm. with my previous project other than options well options is its own single but my last ep like you know i wrote all those songs when i was a secret singer like i was a manager when i wrote all those so mm-hmm. for the most part a lot of those were birthed starting from me on the piano mm-hmm. so whereas every song on this album except for should i tell you was pretty produced by someone else so um i would say there's kind of a few different it still is like you know my vein and there's it's still sultry but there's one song that's kind of a little bit more like pop r&b leaning that's just like more like energetic it's maybe still mid-tempo but it's just like there's a lot going on in the record so it feels big um and then there's some that's kind of more like just groovier funkier um and just like more like fun. And then okay. there's, you know, some, I have a record that's was produced by my friend Peter Cottontail in Chicago and he's kind of like a gospel adjacent artist. So it has some like gospel mm-hmm. undertones in it mm-hmm. and super nostalgic sounding. And then, um, yeah. And then of course there's some slow songs, slower ballads and stuff, but I, I can't wait. Cause when I, I love it. So is there like a possible date or? I mean, uh, I my plan like not till like next June, okay. but um, I'm gonna start releasing singles for it like 
in the new year. Okay. So basically I'm taking the rest of this year to finish the music mm -hmm. and kind of figure out aesthetically what direction I want to go. And then hopefully okay. just like start Excited. dropping them. And the, yeah. I have like, there's like three songs I want to release as singles before I release a project. And there's already three, my three singles that are out, like options, should I tell you, and don't want to let you down mm -hmm. will be part of the album as well. Okay. But it's like my Beautiful. first full, like long body of work. Okay. So it feels really cool to just be able to say that I have that. Yeah. And will we be expecting a tour? Yeah, like my goal is to, um, you know, but it wouldn't be. And not like, because you said like it was. Year. You said like well, before, I'm definitely like, going to do like my own solo yeah. shows in like LA, Chicago, New York. Okay. And then hopefully okay. like get on a tour or a support. Yes. Okay. Okay. Because I know before it. you said oh, it was oh, like no, a, a fake tour and this is the real tour. No, I did a well. I did a tour, like all U.S. tour earlier this yeah. year. I was opening for someone, so it was all U.S. Canada. Um, but I still think I want to like go on a whole tour opening for someone because mm. then it's just bigger rooms and stuff like that. Yeah, um, sure. But trust, this is like going to be like the longest time I'm taking off from performing, which is performing is my favorite part. My least favorite part is actually writing the songs. Really? <laughs> yeah. It's a reality that I've just had to accept. And, and so speaking of like, you know, you're saying, talk about the, the, the part, the least favorite part is basically the writing part. Cause I know, you know, first of all, in a lot of the songs that I've listened to from you, there are focused on different topics like self-love relationships, mm -hmm. um, kind of, you know, well, first off, kind of dive into like, like just kind of getting in those aspects of those topics because obviously we have our own reality yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> we go through these things um and in are there additional topics or something that you feel like this we want to be able to focus on because clearly like we have a lot of messaging now centered around social media things like that nature mental well you know mental health and also what is those other topics that you feel like you kind of want to dive into as well with your music musically yeah so, so a few things obviously i feel like my previous Pretty much all my previous songs, except for Body, are about, like, sensual and relations with other people. Like, Body, even though I talk about, like, this person loving me the way that I want to be loved, Body is really, you know, a self, a song about, like, my journey to, like, loving who I am and being mm -hmm. confident with who I am. <clears throat> but what I love about this upcoming project is that there's a couple songs that just aren't about relationships. Like, I have a song called my girls that's just about me and my girlfriends like mm -hmm. we're a good time and i remember i was having a conversation with my friends and i was like i'm just like sick of so writing songs about these men and my friend was like write a song for us write a song about how wherever yes, we go right. we have a good time and we're just bring the energy and we just love to dance and whatever so there's stuff like that's more like just like fun topics like that mm -hmm. um and then there's like i'm actually kind of in the process right now of writing a song about you know, just like growing out of certain people mm -hmm. um, when you move into different stages of your life um, and being the song, like the chorus of the song, I'm still workshopping it, but it's more about like just being grateful that this person showed me who they are so that I can make space for someone else. Right. Uh, just like friendships and stuff like that. Um, I also really love the topic of just taking something <laughs> simple and writing a song about it. For example, Ari Lennox has a song called New Apartment. Mm -hmm. She's yes. Not apartment. Yeah. Um, or like, or like lip gloss, little mama. Like she's talking about lip gloss, but it's yeah. Or like it's something so simple. Yeah. Yeah. So like, I love to work out, and I want to write a song about my experience at the gym. Ooh. Um. Or I I love taking baths. Like I have I want to write a song about the bath. Um. Or just like what I love that rappers do is where they just they talk about like a specific situation like they talk about a specific night that they like mm -hmm. went out and all these things happened so like for example like i had this like super random experience at a strip club last year and i'm like i just like want to write a song about the strip club as you <laughs> so do it that's yeah. be fun. <laughs> so and that thing is like i love coming up with song concepts but that writing the song is because it's, it's like okay yeah yeah like i have so many song ideas but but I would really love to, you know, I think it's hard for me because, or to write about something like so simple is because all my songs 
songs were written because I was going through some shit, maybe, you know? So when I think about like, oh, I want to talk about the gym, well, I'm like, I just go to the gym. So like, how do I put that into a song? So there's still things that are in progress, but you know, I love how like my song Chicago, obviously it is a love song, but I, I remember I have a journal entry from like months before I wrote the song where I was just like, I really want like it's handwritten. So that that. I was like, I really want to write a song, a, like a conceptual song about how Chicago's my lover. I don't really know what it's going to be like, but I just want that. So, stuff like that is, sometimes you have the idea and it doesn't come, Yeah. you know, until way later. Is there ever a moment where you're like, okay, I don't want to get too deep or too personal into your life? Or oh, is it just everything is just like, okay, um, you can um, <clears throat> talk about There's certain, like, relationships with family members that, like, people have suggested I write about. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, I'm not there yet. Okay. <laughs> um so i guess that but i have like a there's nothing else i can really like think about there's that's too explicit but yeah okay and so so first of all we want to say thank you so much for just really sitting down having this conversation with us i know there was so many questions that we wanted to be able to try to get to do the time not able to get to everything but i do wanted you to kind of touch base on some of the learning aspects and challenges that you have faced um and and just give us your thought process as you as you continue to grow in this industry versus from when you first started and you you know you're you're just trying to you know, do it from an artist's perspective? Ah, there's so many, and I feel like I go through different growing pains about it every day. Um, I, I would say the hardest, it's just really, really difficult to, like, keep yourself, like, locked in to believing in yourself. Um, there's so many things that can like throw you off course. Like, for example, like I literally had this thought when I was in bed last night, like, you know, like right now I don't have a big, big team and I'm just like, sometimes I spiral and I'm like, will I ever have a team? Will anyone ever help me? Like no one's ever going to help me. That means I'm never going to make it because no artist makes it without a big team and all these things like that. And it's like to have these thoughts and be able to like snap yourself back into it and just like, I don't know, it's, it takes a lot of strength. Yeah. And like a lot of people like, you know, because I haven't always been trying to pursue being an artist, it's more of like a recent-ish thing. It seems, sometimes people are like shocked. They're like, oh my God, like they're so shocked by my dedication. Mm-hmm. When in my mind, I'm like, what? I have no other choice. Like, when, but when people acknowledge that, I'm just like, damn, it really just take a lot of shit. Because sometimes like you just have to be delusional and like know that this is all you're going to do. So I, so I think like that's really challenging, like to... Even it happens, like, when I post a cover video on Instagram, and I'm like, this didn't do as well. Like, maybe I should just give up. It's like, people don't even realize, no. like, how much that stuff affects us. Like, I think um, <laughs> it's really just, like, a battle of my own mind. Mm-hmm. But I really do think that, like, the most valuable thing that we have as artists is believing in yourself. Yeah. It's like, that's it. It's like, if you don't have that, like, because, like, like for example, like, I came across I was like I ran into somebody recently who knew me when I was a manager and even when I transitioned into being an artist I always felt like they never took me seriously as an artist and kind of knew me in the box that they knew me as Mm -hmm. and they were one of the first people to ever like in the industry like hear me sing and they like came up to me recently like when I got off tour and they were like wow you're everywhere like you really made this happen for yourself and I'm like yeah motherfucker like I do this <laughs> and you've known this for years and it was just like wow it really takes that long to prove these people wrong and you have to just continue to believe in yourself to prove people wrong but I don't know I just, it just takes a lot of mental strength like literally every day I'm like fucking dying <laughs> hey, like you know what could be also a good thing like you know you have those thoughts like okay if I post this what if the views are not great but what if they are great like what if they for are sure and also like right the know? algorithm just automatically works against us don't get me started it just does and about it (laughs) so it's like like i sound good in the video it's like i wouldn't post it if i sounded bad i still sound good so i just think social media makes things really really difficult Mm -hmm. i'm grateful that i 
love promoting myself and I love posting on the internet um because a lot of people don't so yeah it's really just simple to believe in yourself but I don't know any other like you want like a real lesson um <laughs> everyone so I'm gonna hate you until you're popping <laughs> So, I mean, well, this is the one thing that I love about these conversations is, is because, I mean, you, you're you giving your honest truth, your so realness real. in what yeah. you have yeah. experienced in your journey, right? Mm -hmm. And so, to and, and we have to deal with the reality, right? I mean, as much as we want to be in Delulu land and always speak and always see what we believe in for ourselves you know, we're still human. We still have that aspect of, well, what if this? And what is that? And maybe mm -hmm. I shouldn't, and maybe I should. Um, but it's always about something at the end of that about it is always speaking life. And you always end up coming back and you're reminding yourself like, hey, this is the reason why I'm in it. This is why I'm doing it. I know I got the good, so I ain't worried about that. So you're yeah. good. Yeah. And and I I tell you because I said like I said when I came across you um, via Instagram it was just like you captured me you Jeez. captured everything about me and that just it makes me dig into you even more and if you can take my breath away just with a thirty second post mm -hmm. can you imagine what you're doing to someone and yeah. influencing no, them uh, yeah. who is you know just literally just trying to even step mm -hmm. out and get out of their fears of just trying to pursue their creative works. So yeah, first yeah. off, I give you your flowers. I give you yeah. your hat to you and continue making great music. Cause you don't you. You. No, I mean, like, like, need these reminders yeah. cause it's, it's difficult, but no, I appreciate that so much. And I'm really excited about my new songs. I really feel like you guys will love them. Yeah, yes. I know we will. Uh, oh, we're definitely. And I know there was like we were this. we were talking about like you know being Delulu and stuff like that. But there's a saying: "May your Delulu come true," which means yes. And also, like people like actually advise artists to be like that. Like I remember I listened to this um, <clears throat> interview with John Mayer a while ago, and he talks about um, the Prove It era, mm -hmm. and it's kind of like when you're an early artist and you have to just and I relate to this so heavily. You just like kind of are super obnoxious about your talents and your crafts and you tell people about them. And it's like, I'm the, literally the girl who's like, I walk into a store and I'm like, oh, I love the music that you're playing. Can I request a song? And like, I all put my songs on in their store or like in restaurants or something. Or like, I'm always like turning people into Sophia fans. Like ask anyone who knows me, they're like, everyone becomes a Sophia fan because it's like, no one's talking about me in these rooms that I'm not in. So yeah. it's like, I really relate to like, and he, he, he kind of talks about how it's like, you have to kind of be obnoxious about it. And it's like people sometimes not so much anymore, but people kind of used to make fun of me and be like, no one loves Sophia more than Sophia. And it's like, there's a reason, there's a place where that comes from. Right. It's like, I spent, I spent from when I graduated high school until whenever my first, first song came out, beating myself down telling myself I should not be an artist not believing in myself for so long mm -hmm. that it's like now that I'm doing it like yeah no shit I'm gonna promote the fuck out of myself because I was so terrible to myself yeah, for so long yeah. about this so it's like there's a place of where this comes from it's like I'm not being cocky I'm just being like I'm just and praising who I've become and what I've chosen yeah. to do yeah. so there's a lot of and sometimes context sometimes you got to be your own hype man and your own promoter. Exactly. So, okay. you know, because everybody, you know, they're, they're, they, you know, what's, what's, hold on, what's the, the song, you know, back then, they, you know, they want me oh, to die hot, they all, all, all me. Like, <laughs> really? They're waiting Wait, for you like, to pop and song. then be like, ooh, I know her win. Like, yeah. Because oh my god, that, I'm like wait, that is super relevant because I basically just got kind of like rejected by this indie label that mm -hmm. I can't even tell you the name of them. I don't even care. But my friend, a friend of mine who loves my music and like believes in me, he sent my project to them, and they basically sent back like, um, these songs are whatever, and she doesn't have enough streaming history. And my response was, they'll be sorry in a mm -hmm. year from now. Oh yeah, like most definitely. It's really just it like a numbers game. Way. Yeah. <laughs> So and, and before we get out of here, I just want to say because I feel like a lot of with that aspect is because we transition to a time where they're looking at the right mm -hmm. now. 
and what can be done now and how yeah. the numbers look now instead of understanding like yo in What's the, the long run yeah yeah she's the hit she's it like she got the voice she got the talent she i mean guarantee we pour into this and allow yeah. this to fester into yeah grow. like longevity is so important and it's like the industry is just really bad <laughs> yeah because like back then it wasn't like okay what are your followings what's what's like but metrics it wasn't a thing it was about pure talent yeah and it's, it's so it's just sad. and another point to add in if we think about it you know how a and r was in the 80s in the 90s and early 2000s and things like that right when we started yeah. transitioning over to what considered social platforms the a and r version of what is to be found right so now because we're so depending and we don't have to go out to the shows and we don't have to go to these live acoustic events or things like that mm -hmm. it's easy to put on my computer and be like oh well they got fifty thousand followers they have this amount of streaming oh my work is done let me just grab them right yeah um instead of and we're missing talent like you yeah mm -hmm. i would have killed it in the 90s what <laughs> Girl, <laughs> what that? Grand, like if I was, was I always have like, damn. If I was twenty one when D'Angelo was popping, like I would have been a problem. <laughs> and I can see yeah. that collaboration too. I can see it. No, we're manifesting. Cool. We're, we're manifesting. I mean, I feel like he's not doing anything for his life, but like Gene is my D'Angelo. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. first. Oh man, amazing. I just want to say thank you so much once again. Oh, um, we're going to wrap you. up. Thank you for just coming on this platform, speaking your truth, and yes. you're telling us your journey, which is an amazing story, and just how you were able to A, overcome the imposter syndrome. And let, let, like I said, you're still going through it. You still got to hype yourself up. You still got to promote you um, and being able to grow and being able to have that uniqueness as an artist and be able to stay true to yourself, your writing, and to loyal to your fans in regards yeah. to who we love you are as thank an you. artist. So we want to say thank you so much for coming yeah. through, speaking yeah. with us. Yeah, thank, uh, thank you guys. Everybody Any shout outs you want to give really quick? Yeah. Um, well, I'm crowdfunding for my album. So if anyone feels inclined to support it, the link is in my bio. Um, Send because, us the know, link at the end. I will. I'll share it. Because, you know, these labels don't care yet. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah, like, I really feel like um, I'm just leaning into, uh, with all, like, some rejection that I've faced, I've realized kind of another, you know, just lesson is really, like, the fans are the most important thing that we have. And it's, like, when these industry people reject me, it's, like, you're not my target audience. So it's really kind of just about, like, feeding people, like, you guys and people who really care and, like, leaning into that. Um, but yeah, I would just say like, look out for that. I, would you, excuse me. Well, thank so, you um, so much for just being here with us and we were, and listen, we're going to continue yeah. to support. So those who ain't following, please make sure you're I'm, following, paying attention, everything. And when I come, come to New York, I'll hit you guys up. Yes, please, 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 yes, please. I'm be, sure. So this will not be our like, last conversation. In the front row, probably like boohoo crying. Yeah. Cause yes. I think so. People cry on shit. <laughs> yeah well thank you guys so much it was so nice to virtually meet you yes, yes. pleasure thank and you we'll so much soon. of course all right well you enjoy the rest of your day you. in la all right have a good one bye, bye. see ya Ooh, it does this all the time. So we got to hurry and jump. Well, oh, yes, yes, yes. We got yes. our next one. So, guys, thank you so much for just tuning in for our first episode. Listen, we will we will definitely be back with more. Listen, we're here on Thursdays, 7, 7 p.m. Eastern time. Um, definitely, we just made an announcement. First of all, um, rest in peace to Rich Homie Kwan. Mm. Um, it's been a crazy week in music. Fat Man Scoop. Um, so mm. guys, thank you so much you just for tuning in. Daniel and I gotta hop off, but if you're ready to see we're gonna be up next with Bag Talks and with Gigi. Tune in with us next. All right, life. See ya.